I just want to thank everybody for joining us tonight. Uh, we got quite the crew right now. We got 31 in attendance so far, so that is great to see. Uh, I just want to say thank you for everyone for joining us tonight for this Alumni Night In Temple Grandin Equine Center, bringing the, bringing the healing power of horses to Denver webinar. My name is Ryan Janisak, and I'm with the CSU Alumni Association. And I understand that these are challenging times for many reasons, but we are happy to have you join us tonight and hope this is a fun and educational webinar for all of you. We are here to build a RAM community and be a resource. And this webinar is one of those that helps us do that. I want to thank all of our participants tonight. And I was looking over at our participant registration and there are many members. And I just wanna say thank you so much for your membership. It helps us put on events like these. Wherever you're tuning in from, we are glad to have you here. Put in the chat where you're watching from tonight, I'd like to see where everyone's coming from. As a reminder, this is a webinar and everyone is automatically muted and the camera is off. So please put any questions in the chat box or in the Q&A section. And I'll direct those to Debbie at the end of our event. If you have any technology problems, um, feel free to, my, I'll put my, my contact info in the chat, text or email me and I'll get to you. The Alumni Association has many virtual events. Feel free to check out our calendar of events that, could, that I'll include in our chat in a little bit. It is a wide array of subjects that we offer. We will also be sending out a survey and a recording of this webinar and some additional resources. So be on the lookout for that next week. The speaker tonight is Debbie Moger. Oops, let me, sorry guys, let me advance some of my slides here. There we go. If you don't already have our app, feel free to scan this with your phone. We have Androids on the right and Apple on the left. Scan those. Uh, this helps our membership. Uh, you can check upcoming events, such as our virtual events. Very easy to do with your phone. Uh, slide up, just like you're gonna take a picture and it'll pull it right up. I'll leave it up for a little bit, and then I'll introduce Debbie here. Our speaker, Debbie, tonight, she is the EAS coordinator for CSU Temple Grandin Equine Center at the National Western Complex here in Denver. She's a physical therapist assistant, and she has many more titles. She will share with us the latest updates on the Temple Grandin Center here in Denver, planned programming, and community engagement efforts. Before trans transitioning us to the Q&A discussion at the end of this event. I would like to welcome Debbie. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you everybody for uh, having me and I'm very excited to be here tonight. So um, we will get started, there we go. Yeah, um, so the Temple Grandin Equine Center um, as all of you may know, we use the Temple Grandin name because she's the professor at CSU um, for animal science. Um, she is a big advocate uh, for people with autism um, to get them integrated and working um, into society. And um, so we're, we're really proud to be working under her name. There we go. Um, so what we do at the Temple Grandin Equine Center is um, we offer equine assisted services and that is um, we're integrating research and education and treatment. So all of the above. And this is to help um, sustain the, the um, equine assisted services industry. So betterment of horses and humans alike, um, that's um, where individuals and special challenges can heal, therapists can treat, treat, students can learn, scientists can research, and horses can be studied, cared for, and advanced. So at the Temple Grandin Equine Center, this is 
Um, we're at the National Western Stock Show Complex. So um, all of you probably know Denver right at I-25 and I-70. And we originally started um, down in the, the um, cattle barns. So we were down there, we starting in March of 2017. And the, the year before last, we just moved up to, um, if you're familiar with National Western, um, we moved up to Olot, which is right off of Brighton Boulevard and right next door to the post office. So we're over there. Um, we have in a temporary facility and we made a um, old auto crusher building into a barn. Um, it's actually very functional and um, nice and warm. We've got office buildings, uh, restrooms, all the stalls are inside. Uh, we can have our hay storage inside. Um, the indoor arena is heated. Uh, so it's all very, very functional. So uh, we do have turnout areas for the horses outside and an outdoor arena as well. Um, you can see um, our student on the left. She just, she's, you can't get a bigger smile. So, um, and then in the center, we've got Tumble Grand in there and then, and ours. Okay. So, oops, sorry. There we go. Um, so equine assisted services, um, we offer that. So we're changing the um, language. So we offer equine assisted services. Within that, we offer equine assisted therapy, equine assisted psychotherapy and equine assisted activities. Um, we're trying really hard to change the language. And a matter of fact, um, the American Hippotherapy Association, PATH, the uh, Professional Association of Therapeutic Horsemanship and CSU just did a big uh, terminology study and we're working on changing things into equine assisted services. So it will delineate uh, physical, occupational and speech therapy. So I'm sure some of you have probably heard of hippotherapy. Um, we are trying to change that language. Um, the reason that we're trying to do that is because so many people who um, have heard about what we do um, may refer to it as equine therapy or horse therapy. And so we don't provide therapy for the horses. So that's why we need to change that language. Um, and then we also have equine assisted activities, which include adaptive or therapeutic riding and equine assisted learning. So I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna, ex I'm gonna explain all of these. Um, and then we also have equine assisted psychotherapy. Uh, so there's definite difference in, in all of them. So there we go. So OTPT and speech uh, are all licensed healthcare providers. So we use the movement of the horse. So we're not necessarily teaching horsemanship skills um, to people. Um, so we work on the functional skills, we work on their goals with their families. And so what they do when they're on horseback is they will um, improve strength, balance, coordination, endurance, all of that. And so things that you work towards functional goals as you're doing any type of therapy. Um, this is just instead of being in a clinic, uh, we do it on horseback. Um, equine assisted psychotherapy um, are trained counselors. So maybe like masters of social work, um, or licensed medical health care providers. So those could be psychotherapists, um, therapeutic riding instructors. So TR is therapeutic riding. Instructors are certified through PATH, the Professional Association of Therapeutic Horsemanship. And then EAL is equine assisted learning. And that's, um, and those instructors are trained and certified through multiple associations, which are uh, such as EGALA and Gestalt. And so they're just a little bit differently, different from equine assisted psychotherapy. 
So the people that we serve here, we're all through 18 months to 99 years old. And we serve all different types of um, diagnosis. So these are only some of them. So um, we have, you know, kids that have Down syndrome, maybe they'll have multiple diagnosis, maybe you have Down syndrome and autism, um, or they have, you know, genetic anomalies, which give them, you know, a multitude of uh, problems. And so we can definitely use the horse to um, build their strength and balance and coordination and social skills as well. So the reason that we use the horse for PTOT and speech um, is because the horse moves exactly the same as a man as we walk. So their pelvis moves the same as we do. They have the same lateral movement, the same vertical movement, the same rotation, um, the same um, moving through space. And so when we put someone on the horse, we can give them the, the normalized um, neurological input to teach them how to walk in a, in a correct manner. So using different positions on the horse, so you see this child is sitting sideways, we can use uh, different muscle groups to strengthen. So when they're sitting sideways like that, they can uh, improve their obliques which are the diagonal muscles that go through your core, which are responsible for rotation and lateral movement. Uh, when we put them facing forwards, it's everything in front. So rectus abdominis, all that. And then we can turn them and face them backwards. And then they use all their spinal muscles. So um, we can go all through the core. And then we can also go through the developmental process of laying on your stomach, moving up into hands and knees, into um, tall kneeling, so just being on your knees, and then half kneeling, so kind of think of the proposal pose, and then up into standing. Um, of course, we don't do that with a, um, an adult, but we can do it with someone uh, the same size as this child. You know, we could probably do that, hold her hand, make sure that she's safe. Um, we do have one therapist, and a leader and a sidewalker with each of our individuals that participate in PTOT and speech um, when they're doing these, these individual sessions. So um, they may or may not have very good truck control. They may or may not be able to sit up on their own. So we want to make sure and have our hands on them to make sure that they're safe. Um, if they're a little bit more independent, we can give them a little bit more room um, and back off a little bit so that they can actually use their core more and challenge their self even more. Um, when we use the horse, we can go slow, a very slow, gentle, rhythmic walk. We can increase the speed of walk. We can go into a slow jog. Um, normally, if PTO teen speech, we don't uh, use a canter at all, but usually we'll do a, small, a slow jog. It will increase their input. So if somebody maybe is not really paying attention, we can increase their input and then they can refocus. Sometimes even with working with children that have autism, they might be just really scattered and just everywhere. That bringing them into a trot might actually help them to center again and to actually calm. So sometimes it works a little bit opposite of what you would think that it would. Um, but it, you sometimes you just have to play with it for which, which way you go. So here you see a young man up on his hands and knees. Um, the, when the horse walks, they go left front, right rear, right front, left rear. Same as when we crawl, if you're down on hands and knees, so we can put someone up on a horse and we can put them backwards or forwards and you know, give them a little bit more of vestibular input. Um, we can, so people with, um, who are in wheelchairs, this can help to 
strengthen their core because they have to help transfer from their wheelchair to the bed, from their wheelchair to the toilet. So this can actually help them. We have ramps that we can use to mount so we can do a standing pivot transfer from the horse or from their chair onto the horse. And then we just do a crest type mount and their foot goes over the neck of the horse and that's how they mount. And then when we dismount, they can actually just do the opposite, take the leg over the crest and then gravity works, right? And they slide down and we just do a standing pivot transfer to the wheelchair. So um, that's actually not as hard as it sounds. Um, I just talked about how the horse's pelvis works much like a man's. So again, the same lateral movement, you've got to be able to have vertical movement to be able to clear your foot. Um, you've got to have the rotation to put one hip in front of the other. And, and the horse all does that too. So they've used actually biomechanics um, and attached them to the horse's pelvis and to a human's pelvis when they're on and it actually works exactly the same way. It's very interesting. Um, OT and PT, they'll be mounted for at least 50% of the time. Um, they will also do grooming, tacking, so they can learn sequencing, um, so cognitive skills, they'll be counting, uh, using different types of brushes, different kinds of textures. So that will help them to actually groom themselves too. If they're grooming, brushing a horse, a horse's mane, that helps them to learn how to brush their own hair. Um, tacking helps them to learn how to dress themselves because we have buckles and ties and um, things that you have to actually loop through. And so that helps them to, to dress as well. Um, with the equine assisted psychotherapy, so the horses do behave like humans in many ways. Um, they have a lot of verbal and nonverbal communication, right? So with people who maybe have been abused or neglected, um, who maybe don't have really good communication skills, interpersonal skills, the horses really can help them to kind of bridge that gap so that we can help to teach that person how to learn the, the um, verbal and nonverbal communication. So some of the kids, um, this young man actually, um, he's been coming with us for a couple of years. When he first started with us, we didn't even know if he was verbal. He didn't talk for the first eight weeks. And all of a sudden he just, came out and he just has the neatest personality and it's just so fun. And um, he was very sad to actually stop uh, coming with us. He was with the um, uh, North High School group. So the 18 to 21 transitions group and he didn't want to start coming. So he actually is um, coming to volunteer with us now. So adaptive or therapeutic riding, this is where they'll actually learn horsemanship skills. So these are the PATH certified instructors and they, they are not a medical healthcare provider. However, they do have um, knowledge of all of these different disabilities and how to be able to adapt uh, to the riding skills to, to be able to teach someone with a disability writing skill. So they're very well versed in, you know, if, they're, if their balance is off or if their cognitive level is a little bit lower. Um, and maybe they, you know, they talk to the parents and the parents say they wanna learn left from right and stop, start. Um, they might actually do uh, math skills. <clears throat> so they would place, um, you know, math questions around the arena and they would have to go, they go to a station and they can answer a math question and then they can go to the next station, do something fun. So maybe there's a reward that they would get to do as they do the, the math question, then maybe the reward is trotting or riding independently for a minute or, or maybe riding with a surcingle. So that might be a little bit different for them that they might like too. Um, when the school groups come, so you see on the on the left side, that's 
actually a student that's sidewalking. And so people can, or the students can actually help each other. And so it's really fine to watch that they um, will help to teach each other how to do something that maybe they didn't know before they even walked in the door. So they are mounted most sessions, but they may be the first couple, two or three weeks that they come, well, we'll do eight to nine week sessions. The first couple, two or three weeks, maybe they're just learning grooming and leading and tacking, and then we'll go to riding on that after that. So that's kind of the, the end. So equine assisted learning is great for team, team building in the workplace. Um, you see that, so we will give them a, um, an obstacle course to have to go through. And we might even set it up that we know that that obstacle course is going to be impossible to be able to complete, but it's fun to watch people learn how to team build and problem solve. And you know maybe they're having issues in the workplace um, with another coworker and we might team them together so that they actually have to learn how to work together to be able to um, complete a task. So this is actually, it's, it's very fun to, um, you know, challenge these people who, you know, they don't have to ride, but they can um, definitely learn how to, how to problem solve with each other. Um, we also have many volunteer opportunities. So um, we have partnered with uh, like the Laradon School. So the Laradon School is in Denver, but not too far away from us, just maybe a half a mile. And they come out on a regular basis and they bring an adult daycare program. And, and they're trying to integrate them into the workplace. And so they come and they uh, volunteer and work with us once a week. And so that kind of helps the community engagement. Um, we can have individuals or groups. We have several individuals maybe that uh, just around the neighborhood or who know uh, the Temple Grandin Center or who you know, know the therapist or the child that they wanna work with. And they come and you can do leading, sidewalking. I mean, you see these folks are helping us to repair and build some stuff. Um, we have a, a multitude of lists of things that we can have done. So you don't necessarily have to handle the horse, but if you want to be involved in the sessions, then, you know, we definitely encourage that. So um, it's actually, it's very rewarding to, um, you know, I have always thought that I had the best job in the world because I get to work with horses and kids all day. So you, the kids, when they go to regular therapy, they may, might go crying because they don't want to go. <laughs> Ours cry when they leave because they don't want to leave. So it's very fun. So we are a research education and treatment facility. Um, so the research part, uh, we just finished an, a research on autism. Uh, ASD is autism spectrum disorder and by Katie Peters. And what we did there was um, we had a control group and we had the group that came out and worked with the horses. And what it was was for um, to compare uh, children that have autism for their communication, their socialization, their following directions, um, you know, having um, better uh, communication with friends and family in school. And so we just finished that. So compared to the horses and then the control group was going to the botanical garden. So it was still an outdoor activity, but it didn't um, include the horse. So um, the education part is um, we'll be able to host the professional certifications. So PATH, the Professional Association of Therapeutic Horsemanship, um, the American Hippotherapy Association, um, the Certified Horsemanship Association, um, and we can also have local school groups come and tour and to learn about our industry. 
So, and then of course, treatment was exactly what we're there for, um, what we're doing and um, with all the di different disabilities. So the future. So we have two locations. We have uh, Fort Collins and the Denver campus at the Spur, National Western Spur Center. And this is just a rendering of our Fort Collins facility that's actually opening this week. So we're very excited, very excited to have this done. And this is a floor plan. And I can, let me see if I can increase it just a little bit. So we have the stalls on the left. So over here is, are the barns and the stalls. So this is our indoor arena. Uh, when clients arrive, they come in through the front door. This is our, our reception area. Um, there are uh, restrooms here and then a waiting room that actually has, oh, I can't remember if it has glass there or not. Um, this is all open. So this is open to the outdoor arena so that people can watch and see right directly. Um, um, this is a closed in classroom. It does have a window, but a closed in classroom for people can enter right here. And then we have offices and a therapy room and conference room. So here's our conference room, therapy room. So the therapy room, all the therapists will be able to come in, maybe use that for a little bit of a warm up. We have a rock climbing wall, there'll be a treadmill. There'll be, you know, therapy balls. We have several hooks on the ceilings uh, for different types of swings. So kids that have autism, they, maybe they want to spin. Maybe they need to go slow back and forth. Maybe they go sideways. So we have just different types of swings that they can use. Um, and then we also have a whole mirage of different tools that we can use for therapy as well. Um, we'll also have a bed that we'll be able to drop down right here in case um, we need to do something, you know, on a on a softer surface. We can lay down. Um, lost my mouse. There we go. So the whoops, I'm gonna go back. The horses will come in through the um, barn. Come in through here get tacked up and then they can walk around through here and then they'll go right here into the mounting area. The person is on this side and they, they mount the horse and then they come straight into the arena. So they'll come in through this gate right here. There will also be an open uh, gate or open garage door that they can go outside down here. So this is the facility. It's actually a little more complete um, than this right now. So we're really um, more advanced than, than that little picture right there. That's just taken actually just a few weeks ago. So the, the parking lot is in, the entryway is in. Um, I believe they were moving in furniture the other day as well. But you see it's a beautiful setting right there um, at the Foothills campus. So Port Collins construction timeline. So construction started um, in, in April and we literally are just finishing right now, just this week. So a research education and program starts. So we actually start a research project February 1st. So I believe that we're working with Hearts and Horses to do that, um, another um, study with autism and we will be having a grand opening event in April. So at the National Western Center in Denver, so 10 years ago, the Denver voters decided that they wanted to keep stock show in Denver rather than move it out near the airport in Aurora because they wanted to keep the revenue. So, um, CSU, of course, came on board. They've got three big, big buildings that they're going to build. So it's the Denver uh, 
you know, City of Denver, CSU, and National Western that are all working on the, the new complex. So our building will be the animal health building. And so there's going to be three things that are going on in the animal health building. Um, it's actually called VITA. And so with the equine assisted services, so that's the Temple Grand and Equine Center. So we will be working, um, you know, with doing therapy with people there. Um, the equine sports medicine will be the large animal vet clinic from CSU. Uh, basically, it'll be a triage center. So they will have treatment rooms for the horses. Um, I don't think they'll be able to do major surgery, but they will be able to do rehab because they will have um, uh, treadmills, a swimming pool, a hot walker, um, all of that. Um, and then the small animal veterinary clinic. So that will be with the Denver Dumb Friends League. And it's basically a small animal spay and neuter clinic, but they will also give um, other tours and, and all of that. So um, within the equine assisted services, um, that's, what, that's what we will be hosting there, so. So this is the site plan of where we will be. So we will be, oops, at number 10. I can't find my mouse, sorry. So number 10 is about the middle left hand of your screen, just a little bit lower. So that's where our facility will be. And then right now we are located just over, there's my mouse, off of 49th and Brighton Boulevard. So we're in a temporary facility right here, right now. And then we'll be over here at number 10. So this is gonna be all the whole new complex right here. This going down here, right next to the river, um, we're planning on building an autism, a sensory trail. So it'll be about a half a mile long and it'll have different um, things that people can do, um, you know, sight, sounds, touch. So it'll um, be very fun for them to go out on a trail ride. We'll be able to go right across the road right here to get on the trail. And then we'd be able to go all the way down, come down here and then go all the way back for, to do our sessions. So you see all the cattle and parking and all of that here too. So. And this is what the center will look like then um, at that number 10 building. So you can see we have three stories. So this end right here, this bottom part is all the uh, Denver Dumb Friends League, the Small Animal Spay and Neuter Clinic on this side. Over here on the other side is all the um, large animal vet clinic is on this side. This is our barn, we'll have 15 horses. They'll all have runs, stalls, hot water, or you know, heated water. Um, this is actually a drive-through. So if, they, if we pull in, here's our parking area for our participants. Um, and then we also, so we have loading, so we can go through this garage door, park the trailer here to load or unload the horses, and then we can be, come right out here and then go right back out on the road. The second story on this part right here is all of our admin buildings, admin offices. And then the third floor is um, residential. So we will have space for interns, um, work study. Um, and then we'll also have one caregiver that will live on site. So, and then this is like a common area right here. This is the outdoor arena. And then the indoor arena is this whole big space right here. It's gonna be a hundred by 200. So we will be able to actually quarter it so that we can have private sessions if we'd like, or we can leave it open. So we'll have drop down curtains that can come in. And um, so we can either have private sessions or do group sessions. On the bottom of this, second right here where I said where our admin offices are, that's going to be where all of the therapy rooms and um, intake rooms. So here's the floor plan for that. 
So this area right here, again, is all the Denver Dumb Friends League, small animal spay and neuter clinic. Over here is all the large animal, right? Treadmill, swimming pool, hot walker, clinic space. This is the parking lot. This is the drive through area that I was talking about. Here's our stalls, outdoor arena, indoor arena. So our horses will come through here. They'll walk down through here. Come. These are all uh, grooming and tacking stalls, grooming and tacking areas. This right here is the uh, tack and helmet and boot room. So that's where we're going to keep that. Let me see if I can increase a little better. So all of our participants will come in. They'll come in through this door, okay? And then they'll do their intake. Um, this, I keep losing my mouse, I'm sorry. There it is. Um, so this, so we have a couple of, um, private therapy rooms, some intake rooms, lost it again. There we go, right there. Then this will be our therapy room, just like what we have up in Fort Collins with the our treadmill, um, a rock climbing wall, swings, um, a solo step. So solo step is uh, something that you can hang from the ceiling that you can use a harness for people when they're learning how to walk independently so that it's easier for the therapist. So they basically have like a vest on so that just in case they fall, they won't go down all the way and they can learn how to catch themselves. So, and then this is our therapist uh, office. And this is a little kitchen area. And this is our waiting room. And so it's gonna be set up like a little coffee shop and this will all be a window here so they can overlook the um, the arena. So horses will come from here, down this way, come through here, right here. This, this gate's actually gonna be over a little bit. So they'll come in here, mount, and then they'll go straight into the arena. This is a classroom right here. So, and then like I say, this is all the Denver Dumb Friends League um, separate offices and, whoops, there we go. So this is upstairs. So these are the offices that I was telling you about. Um, we have a conference room and then there'll be a, a bridge that you can go over. And then you can oversee what's going on over here in the large animal clinic part. This will be um, like stadium seating that you can look either over the um, large animal vet or over the arena. So again, this classroom I believe is downstairs. And this is all the living space that's upstairs. This is the third floor. So this is our construction now. This is what's happening now in Denver. Um, we actually have beams up. So we can see it from my Twitter. That's our barn that they've got started already. Here's our foundation. And then the, the beams are going right up there. You can see the foundation here. So estimated completion in September, and then it'll take us a little while to get in there. So we will be uh, starting up just as soon as, uh, well, right after the Christmas break actually in January right? next year. So not far from now. So again, this is the Denver facility. So. Um, this is inside the barn. Stalls, of course, will all go here. These are the doors to go outside to the runs for the horses. So this is going to be uh, an office for our barn manager. So and we'll also be able to keep uh, tack and feed and stuff in there. Um, there's another, there's a feed storage room 
um, that's going to be just to the right of the barn over here. So we'll have a place where we can put the manure, where we can keep the feed um, on our, uh, you know, garbage and stuff that'll go, that'll go away. So thank you so much um, for having us. And these are um, the email addresses that you can send questions to. Um, again, my name is Debbie Moger and I manage the Denver facility. So if you have any questions about the Fort Collins facility, I can actually send you to who you would need to talk to probably Adam Dario. And um, so if you have any questions, I'm, I'm definitely up for that. We do have some great questions so far, Debbie. Um, here's one we just got right off the bat. Where do you get your horses for, from for therapy and how do you train them? So we get our horses, all of our horses are leased and um, we do a very rigorous um, you know, a program to check to make sure if they're good for our therapy or not. So. Most of them are retired show horses. So they've kind of traveled around, they've seen it, they've been there, they've done that. Um, so loud noises don't scare them, umbrellas don't scare them, wheelchairs don't scare them. So <clears throat> then we uh, see you know, if their uh, temperament is good for us too. So are they quiet? Are they flighty? So we go and we, we look at them on site first um, for at the at the people's house, you know, or home, whoever wants to lease them to us, we go and look there, and then we bring them back, and we have a 30 day trial period, and we just kind of put them through the rigors. We we test to see everything that we're gonna, you know, literally literally throw at them, and um, to see if they can handle that or not, or if maybe they will eventually, you know, if they'll they'll learn how to. So. Um, what was the other part of the question? How do I get them and? Yeah, and how do you train them? And how do you train them? Yeah, so so we watch their behavior, right? So horses are very, you know, they have great nonverbal communication. So um, some of them are gonna tell you right away if they don't like something. Some of them are gonna be a little more just standoffish and, and then some of them, of course, are gonna be very accepting for things that we do. Um, we, of course, don't automatically or just, you know, right away put, um, someone with a disability on this horse is we ride them, we put them through everything that we are going to expect them to do. So we get on, we do all the different positions to make sure that it's not going to, you know, bother them if we're sitting backwards or if we're standing on their back or something. Cool. Um, someone else is wondering, can they take e EAS programming online? Um, so no, it actually, that's hands-on. So, so there's not such thing as just EAS programming. So with the with EAS, so equine assisted services. So there's you know the difference is if you're if you're going to do PTOT or speech, um, you have to have a license to practice physical, occupational, or speech therapy. So you kind of start there, and then this is kind of a specialty to work with the horses. Um, the therapeutic horsemanship. Um, that's through PATH, the Professional Association of Therapeutic Horsemanship. And um, there is some online portion that you do, but then there is also in-person testing that you have to do as well. So you do have to have knowledge of the horses. You have to have, um, you know, riding skills, because if you don't know how to do it, how are you going to teach someone else to do it, right? Um, and then as far as the equine assisted psychotherapy goes, um, you know, of course, you're going to have your, your social work uh, master's degree, probably, or, you know, psychotherapist, um, you know, something that you kind of, you have, you go there first, then you go, come to the horses. Cool. And if someone were wanting to volunteer, what is the age for someone to volunteer with you guys? Uh, so 14 is our age where we don't require a parent to be a to accompany them. So anybody 14 or older can come. Um, it doesn't matter if you have horse experience or not, we will teach you. So there are 
you know, special ways that we handle these horses um, because we want them to hold their body in a particular manner to keep them safe, to keep our clients safe. And so we do have a, a, a general way that we handle them. So we will teach you how to handle them. Um, if you don't have horse experience, that's fine too. Um, because we will teach you and you don't necessarily have to have horse experience to be a sidewalker. So you just have to be able to be willing to be a, basically a fireman. You know, you're going to run towards the danger instead of away just in case something happens. So you're there to keep that client safe who's on the horse's back. Cool, cool. And for yeah. volunteer opportunities in Denver and Fort Collins, who would they contact for those? Mm -hmm. Um, so they can email this, uh, the Temple Grand and Equine Center, or they can email me. So what's on your screen right there? Volunteers. We try to do a volunteer training every other week. So we actually have one next Friday. So not this Friday, but next Friday uh, from one to three. And so if you'd like to email me and um, get signed up, then, then we'll do that and get you trained. So we do follow strict COVID protocols. So we all wear masks. Everybody takes their temperature when they walk in the door. Um, we ask if they have any COVID symptoms. They go straight in, wash their hands. Um, we have kind of limited areas where people can go now. We're trying to limit how many people are on site, but we do have a very large uh, footprint, you know, large square footage. So, so we're pretty good with that. Um, the families do understand that when we're doing physical and occupational therapy, that we do have to have our hands on the kids to keep them safe or to help them, you know, do a different movement or to help facilitate their muscles. And so obviously when we're doing that, we can't stay six feet apart, but um, it is a medical, medically necessary, you know, treatment. So we're doing the best that we can to keep everybody safe. Cool. And so how many horses do you have at like the Fort Collins facility and the Denver facility? Maybe it's just in the future, how many would you have? Uh, so right now in Denver, we have five and in the future we'll have 15. Uh, we expect to see uh, upwards of 300 clients a week in Denver when we get this new facility started. Um, in Fort Collins right now, I think they have, I want to guess between 10 and 12 horses right now. So, and I'm not really sure. I think they're probably seeing, you know, between 50 and a hundred a week up there right now. Very cool. And, uh, someone had a question about the sensory trail. Is that, is that designed for use with the horses or is that just for people? So it will be used for the people while they're on horseback. So we will have something that's going to be built up tall enough so that they don't have to get off the horse to actually, excuse me, experience something. So it will be like maybe uh, a beanbag game where they can throw and, you know, like cornhole to throw something in there or, um, you know, a, a musical instrument that they can play while they're still sitting on horseback or different textures that they have to do, or you know, reaching, um, sight, sound, smell. So everything that you can think of sensory, you know, going over a hill, you know, so that's gonna be different, leaning back, leaning forward, leaning sideways. So so yes, it's it's actually for both. So it's people while they're on horseback. And for uh, you mentioned some of the things about COVID, how it's impacted. And I think we're going to be working with that with uh, the city of Denver. And um, I'm hoping that the OT students from Fort Collins, from CSU, uh, get in on that and help design some of those, those sensory obstacles. And someone had another question. Uh, you kind of touched on that before about COVID. Um, uh -huh. Has that impacted some of the other things that you guys might have been doing that you can't do now or is it pretty much you can do what you need to do right now um it it, it has slowly increased so we started off real slow um limiting you know the amount of people that we can have on site so yes i mean you know 
like I said, because we have so much square footage, we have our office space, you know, I can be on site, but still actually in another room, even with my door closed if I need to. Um, so we try to minimize how many people are on site at a time and, you know, just to keep everybody safe. So um, we just, right now we're allowing one therapist in the arena at a time. And so, you know, that would be four people, right? That are in their total, because there's one client, one therapist, and a sidewalker, um, and the lead and the horse leader. So, but again, we've got lots of thing. We've got big garage doors we can open. We have fans we can turn on. So it's it's actually a very safe situation, and we can go outside. We had another question about the horses you guys use. Why why leased versus purchase? Well, you know, sometimes um, the horses we find that, you know, they love their job and they'll do it literally for the rest of their life. Maybe we'll get a horse when it's six years old and, you know, we have them until they're 20, 25 years old. Um, some horses, it may not be just for them. Maybe they'll last for, you know, two or three years and then they start saying, yeah, that's not for me. And they start having some either physical issues or behavioral issues or something, or maybe the, the owner doesn't want to give up total ownership. And so they have the option to be able to take them. Just kind of gives everybody more options. All right. And does anyone else have any other questions for Debbie? We also have, we have a, a very, oh, you're muted. there we go. Can you hear me now? Yeah. I just, I, apparently my internet went down. Um, we also have a very, sorry about that, a uh, large um, variety of horses. So we have a Welsh pony. We have um, the picture of this horse right here is he's the back of a halflinger. And so he's, you know, draft horse, with his legs cut off, he's very, you know not very tall. And then we have two uh, quarter horses, believe it or not, that are almost 17 hands tall. So the two real big guys. And then we have another quarter horse that's about 15 hands. So um, again, each of them all have different movements. They all, um, you know, have different personalities. So maybe someone who is um, very meek, you know, and very um, reserved you wouldn't want to put with a horse who's very gregarious and is gonna, you know, get real close to them and up in their face. You wanna start with somebody who's real laid back and, and very gentle. And then you can start working towards, you know, being a little more aggressive either way. So um, we have definite uh, variety of sizes, shapes, colors, movements. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, we did have a someone that mentioned, Thank you for such a great programming. Uh, wondering as you're wondering as you are changing language, if you could replace special challenges with people with with special challenges with people with disabilities, and replace okay. victim with survivor. Uh, they're just yeah about empowerment. So yeah, I think that's great. Yeah, yeah, I think that's absolutely a great idea. Absolutely. Perfect. She said thank you. Um, yes. And then the, someone just asked, how much do you charge clients? So all of our providers oh. are contractors. So it depends on what they charge. So a therapeutic writing session could be, and this is just like ballpark figure, um, $70 a session. That includes the, the um, instructor, you, which you pay directly to them, right? So you don't pay it to um, the, the Temple Grandin Equine Center um, because the provider, the contractor, <clears throat> excuse me, actually leases the facility from C and the horses from CSU. So they set their own pricing. So it can be anywhere from a therapeutic riding session, <coughs> excuse me, um, for you know $70 for the hour um, to if you're doing PT or OT, you know, we're charging um, insurance companies. 
And so it's a regular PT or OT appointment, which is, you know, I don't know, $140 an hour. So uh, someone just put this in. Uh, how slash from where do you get your clients? <laughs> um, so we do get our clients a lot from word of mouth. Um, we can get them from referrals from doctors. Um, we have reached out to school groups and um, you know, thera therapeutic, <coughs> excuse me, therapeutic groups. So Children's Hospital, um, the Brain Injury Alliance, um, Rocky Mountain Human Services. You mentioned it earlier um, uh, for internships. How would uh, students learn about those opportunities? Um, so they can go to their advisors um, up at school. And I work closely with, you know, Tiari Stevenson, <coughs> excuse me, and um, Amelia, I can't think of her last name right now. But um, so, yeah, they can go to their advisors and tell them that. <clears throat> they're interested in doing an internship with us chips and that's what we'll be able to use our um, <clears throat> um, residential part for our third floor. Anybody else have any questions for Debbie? Let's see if anybody puts anything in the chat for a little bit there. Still got a little bit of time left, so great question so far, though. Oh, let's see. Someone says thank you so much. Yeah. <clears throat> and our after this presentation, we will have a video recording. So if you want to share this with someone that couldn't attend tonight, feel free to share this video with them. It'll be going out with the survey next week sometime. We got some more thank yous. Uh, this is such a great program. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very, very much for having me. Um, I really enjoyed it. So I hope that everybody, um, you, you know, can come down and see us if you'd like a tour um, at, for our current facility, just email me and we can get something scheduled. Um, that, like I said, our new facility will be done in January. So, and I think they're, they might be setting up tours for that here pretty quick too, so. That sounds great. Well, maybe eventually we'll have a virtual tour at the facility for you guys to see. The there you go. There you go, yeah. 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 Well, if it, anybody else has any questions, otherwise I want to say thank you, Debbie, for the great presentation tonight. Uh, thank it's you. really eye-opening what you guys are doing and what you'll be doing in the future. Uh, mm -hmm. It's such a great facility and it's gonna be amazing when it opens up, so. Yeah, yeah, well, wonderful. Well, thank you so much for having me. It was, it was, thanks. It was really nice. Yeah, thanks again, everybody for attending and we'll see you later. <laughs>